Hey guys, Smelling Roses here. We are currently in Sandbridge, Virginia, just south of Virginia Beach. And this is the Little Island City Park, a Virginia Beach Municipal Park. This is where I left my vehicle. I have to walk down this road one mile to the entrance to the Back Bay National Wildlife Refuge. And just beyond those dunes is the Atlantic Ocean. The refuge sits along a narrow strip of sandy land here south of Virginia Beach with the Atlantic Ocean to the east and the Back Bay to the west. All right guys, you see we made it to the Back Bay Visitor Center, but we're just passing through. You can see there's ample parking here, but you are not allowed to park here overnight. The parking is for day use only. From the Visitor Center, we will be off of the paved road and there is no longer any vehicle access from this point on. You can see hiking and biking only and no pets in the Back Bay Refuge. This is the route to the Dyke Trails. We're going to be taking the East Dyke Trail today. We may possibly return via the West Dyke Trail if it is open. I believe it's, it may be seasonally closed. But anyway, today we're taking the East Dyke Trail, and you can see that it's four and a half miles to the False Cape State Park Visitor Center, seven and a half miles to my campsite tonight, and you can see 10 miles to the North Carolina border. Hopefully we'll make it down there tomorrow. You can see the terrain is very flat here. The average elevation is definitely below 10 feet above sea level. However, there are some dunes that get up to close to 50 feet above sea level. I think we have time for a short detour. This boardwalk is part of the Dunes Trail and it will take us just east of the East Dyke Trail out to a view of the Atlantic Ocean. Okay guys, so we will now be leaving the Back Bay Refuge and we have arrived to False Cape State Park, a state natural area preserve. Check this out. From here, it's just under a mile to the visitor center of the state park. And we're going to stop there and check in for the camping. I already have a campsite reserved. You must reserve in advance if you want to camp here. The visitor center is the only source for drinking water anywhere in the park. So I'm going to fill up a collapsible container there and hopefully carry enough water to last me at least through the day and night tomorrow because my campsite is over two miles from the water source and I don't want to be spending a lot of time hiking back and forth just to get water.
So it's going to be pretty heavy to lug that water, but hopefully we just have to do it one time. All right, guys, you can see we made it to the visitor center. Check out the cool marker they have here. Southernmost Virginia State Park, False Cape. 1,146 miles to Key West. All right, guys, so we are leaving the visitor center. Took a break there and had snack for lunch. And I'm also now carrying about 25 extra pounds of water. <laughs> so the next couple of miles are going to be pretty tough, but it's going to really save us in the long run. So from here, it's about 2.3 miles to camp. All right, guys, it's extremely windy here on the back bay, but welcome to the Wood Duck Overlook. Looking out onto the back bay. guys so we have left the sand ridge trail and we're now on the false cape landing trail and i'm happy to report that that means we're only about a quarter of a mile from camp let's go have a look at the beach Pretty awesome guys, have a completely undeveloped wilderness area right on the beach and at least for now we have it all to ourselves. You can see I have the option to camp directly on the beach here but I think I'm going to go ahead and stay on the other side of the dune back in the woods. Alright guys, home sweet home for the next couple of days. Let me give you a little tour around camp. You can see my tent is all set up and I've already set up all my sleep system inside and have most of my gear stowed away. Got these cool trees right here in camp. Nice picnic table. You can see there's another unoccupied campsite just over there. And right through the trees, I don't know if you can tell, but there's a privy right over there and an additional unoccupied campsite behind it. I was told that I would not need to worry about bears here in the park, but you can see the raccoon rack as they call it. Hang my food bag there on the raccoon rack. Keep it away from squirrels and raccoons. There's my huge water container that I lugged up here. It's about two and a half gallons, maybe close to three gallons of water there. Weighing 25 plus pounds. And <laughs> let me tell you, that was no fun to bring that 2.3 miles from the visitor center. But there's no drinking water here in the false landing campground. And as I mentioned, it's 2.3 miles to the closest drinking water source. Tomorrow is a full day here in the park and I plan to explore the area further south from here, even further from the water source. So even though it was a pain to lug that water in here, I did not want to do a four and a half or five mile hike to sometime tomorrow just to get additional water. So it was worth it to make the extra effort to bring that in tonight. With the cooler weather and windy conditions today, insects were not a problem at all. I've barely seen any insects today, and hopefully that will remain the case for the remainder of our time here. The biggest wildlife threat that we'll keep an eye out for is the eastern cottonmouth, also known as a water moccasin. Very venomous, poisonous snake here in the area. And again, with the cooler weather, hopefully they will be less active, but it is warm enough for them to still be out and about. So 
we'll keep our eyes open for those. All right, guys, going to take a little short hike around the area near camp. We're not going to go very far. This is one of the other campgrounds. You can see there's plenty of open space here. I actually considered getting a site here myself before opting to stay more over to the ocean side. This is the back bay side of False Cape Landing. You can see. Nice boat dock here on the back bay. We're a little early for sunset. So from here we can actually take the maple leaf trail so we don't have to backtrack. And we'll start making our way back to camp. This is the first trail we've taken all day that's been a real hiking trail instead of a road. Okay, we're back to the Sandy Ridge Trail. The Maple Leaf Trail continues in that direction all the way to the ocean, but we will complete that part of the trail maybe tomorrow. It's easier to get back to camp by taking this road. Alright, so made it back to camp. Time to cook some dinner and probably just relax around camp. Got a big day planned for tomorrow so doubtfully I will hike back out anywhere this evening. Probably just have some dinner and then settle in for the night. On the menu for tonight is Mountain House Chicken Teriyaki with Rice. Well, I said I wouldn't go back out after dinner, but I couldn't resist. That's a pretty cool one. Nice. I forgot what these are called. I haven't seen one in a very long time. If somebody remembers the name, let me know. Oh man, check this guy out. cool stuff all right guys so I'm in my tent now and uh, it's still pretty early it's about 8 p.m. but just relaxing here at camp and just trying to get some rest I already reviewed the park map and the title schedule and put together a kind of a route for tomorrow but I'll tell you guys more about that when we're on the trail tomorrow I think it's uh, forecast to be in the upper 40s but that forecast was for the city up at Virginia Beach. So out here in the wilderness and especially here camped between two large bodies of water, I'm expecting it to be a little cooler. Uh, it may get down into the low 40s, possibly even the upper 30s. I really appreciate you guys coming along for the adventure on day one. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm expecting to see some more great stuff tomorrow on day two, so stay tuned. Alright, good night everybody. I'll see you guys in the morning.